Hi, I'm Martha Minizzi, and I am here to testify. Hello, and welcome to an all-new Testify. Let's welcome our host, Prophet Jonathan Dorn. with Prophet Jonathan Dorn, brought to you by Soul Fry Entertainment. I thank you for listening today, every one of you that are listening today online, those that are listening on YouTube. We just want to say thank you. We thank you and we appreciate all of our listeners today. We want you to know if you're listening on YouTube that you can go to our YouTube channel, which is Testify Broadcast, and hear some of our interviews with some of the greatest names in all of gospel music, people from all walks of life that have came here to share their testimony with us. We want you to know that Revelations 12 and 11 says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Here to testify today, we have with us our shining gospel celebrity of the week. She is an international gospel recording artist. She is a world-renowned songwriter, and we know that she is indeed trailblazed in praise and worship as a praise and worship leader. And we know that she has also shared her gift with the world, and the world has been blessed by her gift, and we are today... Today, she's here to share her, her gift with us and her testimony with us. So we are so blessed to have with us today Martha Munizzi. Amen. So how are you today, Martha? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Amen. So we, we know that Martha today, she's phoning in from the Orlando area today. And um, as I was saying, that you've done such great things in the kingdom of God. And we are just uh, being, I know the world has just been so blessed by your gift. Um, so the first thing that I want to ask you, and I ask everyone that comes to our show this, is um, how did you come to know our Lord and Savior, and how did He you know, just come to become your uh, personal Savior? Well, I was actually born into a Christian family. My parents were both ministers and songwriters, and my dad's a pastor, preacher. So I was just really blessed to be born into a Christian household. Um, but when I was probably around six or seven is when I made my first confession of, uh, you know, in receiving the Lord into my heart as a young girl. And then as a teenager, I realized that it was really more than just my parents' gospel, but that it was mine as well. And that's when I really began yeah. to seriously take my relationship with the Lord very serious and really started to grow as a disciple, um, you know, later, 13, 14. So it's been a, it's been a long process for me, but I, again, I was blessed to be born into a Christian home. Yes. Yes, it's just so good to see how God has blessed you, as you were saying, to, you know, be born in a Christian home and to have parents and people who can pour into your life and speak into you and also to live lives that are, you know, an example to you. And that's such a blessing. Amen. So we just encourage those who are listening today who, you know, we ask children to continue to live a life before your children. And that's one of the greatest seeds I think you can sow and into their lives is just showing them how to live you know, the you know, the Christian life each and every day of your life. So, um you know, we know that now God has blessed you to do such great things in your music and we know that uh you know, you started out uh to being a praise and worship leader in in the church and that is uh I know that many people, especially here in the Central Florida area, love your ministry and, you know, people just still just can't forget uh just how you have been a blessing to the body of Christ in leading the people of God into worship. So um, just tell us about how it, how it was for you starting out as a praise and worship leader. Well, you kind of um, you touched on it for sure. I Just being raised in a Christian home, being raised in a church, um, always being just brought up in the church and singing in church and leading praise and worship and working with the team, I did that for more years than I've ever done anything, you know, more years of working in a local church than I have traveling travel full time yeah. so um, being raised in a local church and just working alongside pastors and the leaders that's where I started you know people ask me that all the time and I say I cut my teeth in a local church you know it's what, where yeah. I got my start where I learned how to be a servant I learned how to you know to, to do all those things that I'm doing now on a much bigger scale but it really challenged me it developed me um, and my faith and my skills and my Whatever God's given me, I've developed uh, there. 
And so, to me, that's the best place to start because it's a real authentic place that you just, you know, you can't, I don't think you can get the experience anywhere else like you can get in a local church. You know, just serving yes. beside the local pastor, beside the worship leader, in the worship team, however, you know, whatever God calls you to do. It's just a very unique, and it's a great way to be developed. Yes. Yes, amen. And we know that, you know, just like you were saying, just each and every day doing that and serving and, you know, being humble and knowing that, you know, each and every day that you are that you are doing it unto the Lord, you know, and even when you are, you know, coming under submission to other people that you're doing it unto the Lord and that God's going to be a blessing and He's going to bless you for that. And I know that your faithfulness, you know, has been what is what has really caused all of the blessings, you know, to really come upon your life, being faithful, doing what God has called you to do each and every day. And now we're just seeing the, you know, the blessings of that and the fruit of that. And so uh, just tell us how, about how it is for you when you're leading people into worship and, um, you know, what kind of mindset, you know, it takes for you to lead people into worship and into the presence of God. You know, because I've uh, been blessed to be there uh, while you've uh, led people into the presence of God. And I know that it's such a blessing to see because so many people come into the sanctuary or wherever it is and they they say so many things before they got there and there's so many distractions, but everyone comes, you know, you just have a, such an anointing on your life to bring everyone's mind in, you know, to the presence of God. So tell us about how that is for you. Well, I, first of all, I, I have to be prepared. <laughs> Coming in prepared is important. Knowing what I'm going to do, yeah. having basically in a you know where I where I'm what I believe in God to do in that service, um, and then being prayed up, of course, is a huge part of the preparation and just being ready and focused on what the Lord wants to do, and then getting there and then realizing that you know whatever spiritual warfare, you know, prayer is very key. That in different regions they face different issues and things that are in the atmosphere. Not to be super spiritual, but you know, if you're down yeah. in South Florida, in Miami, they have or Orlando, it's a totally different atmosphere than other areas. You know, so yeah. being aware of those things and really learning how to pray and knowing how to pray is is key. Um, and again, being prepared and just being hopeful and believing that God's going to do something great. A Bishop Joseph Garlington always says, you know, if, if you're praying about what you, about you know God, we give this service to you. Ask the Lord what. Actually, speak out what do you want to happen in the service? What do you desire to see? And, and yes. my desire is, Lord, I heal the people, set them free. We, we, I desire joy. I desire freedom. And that's what I say, Lord. That's what we. Des- that's how I pray. God, we just desire freedom in the place, just a total yes. restoration, reconciliation to your spirit. God, just for you to move and have your way. And so whatever it is that I really want God to do, that's what I ask him to do. And he does that and so much more. Yes. Amen. I know it's just such a blessing to see. Just uh, I know that you having that that expectation, as you were saying, you know, just desiring for God to do something great, and that that can just you know be contagious, and everyone can you know have that same desire for the Lord, and as you know, and as they come on, you know, come to one accord, having the same mind that the Spirit of the Lord meets you. You know, I know each and every time that the blessings of the Lord are with you. So we know that you are also a, a world-renowned songwriter. Uh, you're, you know, t- to me personally, you're one of the greatest songwriters uh, that I've seen, you know, in a, in a very long time. And I know that, uh, just tell us about, just if you can, just walk us through a little bit of how it is for you to get um, what I like to, you know, what I like to call a, a song from heaven, like, you know, like heavenly songs, like Because of Who You Are and so many different great songs that you've written. Um, tell us about how that is and how you, you how God usually, you know, because everyone's different, how God usually gives to you the songs that you write. Well, it is different. Um, in different, I guess, in different days are different, you know, different songs come differently. Sometimes I'll find that I'm just maybe spending time with the Lord and a song will just, all of it will just be downloaded in 15 minutes. You know, and other yeah. times I find that if I'm collaborating, it may take a little bit longer, but sometimes songs come very quickly. Sometimes they they take a couple of weeks. Sometimes I put them on the back burner and come back to it. You know, it just depends. Yes. Um, it, they're they're different. I, a lot of times I, I find most of my inspiration for songs in the Word of God. I mean, it's really the greatest resource we have for songs. 
you know, mm-hmm. about him and about his promises and how good he is that really um, bring people to him and the knowledge of who he is and his words. And so that is probably my biggest inspiration um, is just the Word of God and, and, you know, and just having music playing and, and, and having an atmosphere set, you know, for the Holy yeah. Spirit to dwell and being in an at, a prophetic uh, service, you know, sitting in church. Sometimes there will just be such a creative spirit happening a flow yeah. happening while the pastor's preaching. So I try to stay involved and engaged in all those moments because you never know. You know, it's that moment that you think, oh, this is just another moment that could be that the moment that God could download something in your spirit that you're not even expecting. I found that to be true. And yeah. um, so I try to not judge, you know, anywhere that I go or any place I'm sitting, it's easy to say, okay, you know, I've heard this sermon a thousand times. Okay, I'm, I'm exhausted. I need to go. But I try to live my life with expectation as much as I can that at any moment yeah. God could download an idea, a thought, a scripture, a song, and I, I try to stay aware of that. Yes, yes, I know it's just so good that you have that, you know, mentality of thinking and, and knowing that, you know, especially when God has uh, done such great things through you in the past and, you know, you're just continuing continuing to see, you know, and to look to Him for it, you know, as you continue to do things for him, you know, continue to look to him and know that if he, you know, he's the one that did it before. So that's so so great to see that you just put all the pressure on him and say, Lord, you do what you want to do and you have your way. Yes. 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 So um, I know that people are being blessed today and encouraged and inspired and uplifted by by your testimony today. Amen. So tell us how important it's been for you to um, have that relationship with God that, you know, that you started out with, you know, even just as a, a young a young girl and up to now and how that is how that is, how important that's been to all that you've done so far uh, in the kingdom of God. Well, again, being raised in a Christian home and serving in my local church and finding my husband at you know, at a pretty young age we started dating when I was sixteen and um all of those things and my father was a, a pastor and a songwriter and there's a lot of things that have really helped me develop and have been very important for what I'm doing now, you know, and the songs that I write mm-hmm. now and, you know, getting married and raising children, all of it is just a huge part of my development and my growth and becoming who God's made me to be, and I'm still developing every day, you know, but again, yes. I, I go back to really what's important is spending a season serving somewhere is so key, um, yes. and that, to me, is you know, it's reverse in the kingdom. You know, we want to be rulers and not really have much experience. We just want to do it because we think we can. But really, yes. wh- whoever is the least is really the greatest in the kingdom. And it doesn't mean that we, you know, beat ourselves down and we're not worthy and we're not, you know, in Him is our righteousness and our worthiness and everything we need is in Him. And He has found us worthy and that's the end of it. You know, that's it. So we can yes. we can come boldly and do what he's called us to do, and come boldly before his throne. Uh, at, but at the end of the day, we we learn how to put ourselves in positions and in places where we will grow as servants. That's that's if you want the greatest, become the least. That's what Jesus did. You know, he served, and even to this day, he is serving. There's a, a serving heart. You know that we get from Scripture that that is the most crucial thing in our Christian walk is that we learn how to serve. You know, Bishop Garland and I yes. was quoting him, but the high, he said, the higher you want to go, the lower you need to go. And it's really true. The more we Amen. allow ourselves to just diminish so that God can increase, and, and but not to diminish to the point where we just sit back and wait for him to do something, we're, we're losing our desires and becoming one with his desires. And that's what's so great is that he wants to use all of us. You know, he wants to use every yes. part of us to do what he's called us to do. So, Serving really helps us get rid of the selfishness and get rid of the, you know, the. I I love this. My it's a great il- illustration. My sister and I were talking, and their dog. They have a German Shepherd. Their dog had like seven puppies, and uh-huh. they're three or three or four months old now. And we were just there, and we were playing with the puppies, and and um, she said, you know, that what's important to understand is that what they've learned is the trainers have come back and expressed to them that it's not the dog that's the most uh, aggressive or the one that's isolated and alone, the ones that's independent, that's not the smartest dog. It's the ones that will give you its ears, the ones that will put its head down, 
the one that will come to you and give you his submission and, and